proteins are highly complex and essential biomolecules present in every living organism. They come in various shapes, sizes and functions. They are responsible for structure, regulations and almost everything in your body. Proteins are made up of building blocks called amino acids which can be either water loving, hydrophilic or water hating, hydrophobic. A structure which has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic components are called amphiphilic molecules. The nature evolved uh, to make protein assembly not for just for structure but to do function. So most of the protein assemblies found in nature are dynamic in nature. Okay? And how to impart functions to the artificial protein assembly is the question that we asked. When we started this program, there were not much studies which focused on how to make uh, uh, amphiphilic proteins through synthetic organic chemistry. Okay? And most of the reports are either cumbersome, not very straightforward, and it is limited to few proteins. Okay? So we wanted to develop a methodology where it should be more of general so that I can change each component of my macromolecular design. Okay? And that's where we invented this, you know, uh, we, we kind of used this amphiphilic activity based probe and then we invented uh, this new technology called micelle assisted protein labeling. So these two things offers a unique way to uh, do a bio conjugation where you would do a site specific conjugation and then you would be able to purify the protein without any problems. So once you have a purified proteins, they would automatically come together to make a protein complex of bigger size. Basically. We have taken protein, we have taken uh, amphiphilic activity based probe. We take hydrophobic molecule and attach it to the ethylene glycol moiety. And these probes will have fluorophosphonate group as a warhead. This fluorophosphonate goes and reacts to the, the protein. Now this whole amphiphile can be co called as giant amphiphile and this collapses to form assemblies driven via hydrophobic interactions. And then we purify the reaction mixture and then later we have done self-assembly studies by using DLS, SANS, SEC, SECMALS. It's like you know series of challenges. We started with the challenges in the synthetic chemistry. The other challenge was the labeling. So how do you actually know that you are actually modifying the protein? That is another challenge. The first part was the purification of the conjugates. To get the purification done and the moldy done. And that was a really you know aha moment for the lab. You know, it was it's a fantastic experience. You know that's what you experience as a scientist, right? The next thing we are excited about whether they would self-assemble, right? Whether they would make a bigger protein complex, right? So when we ran uh, ACC studies, we were really you know happy to see that this complex, you know, self-assembled. Essentially, one can change the size of the protein complex at your will. Now we wanted to take this technology to the next level, and we also have a series of patent in this area. Traditional vaccines can actually revert back. So there is always a question how safe these vaccines are. With the emergence of protein engineering, so people are actually trying to get part of the protein which is actually immunogenic to make a vaccine. So that's where I think you know our methodology will be more into. Also we reported disassemble particles using light. We placed uh, the uh, photosensitive group in between the hydrophilic and hydrophobic portion of the bioconjugate. Now once we shine light on, the, on those assemblies, this hydrophobic part will be chopped off and will be apart from hydrophilic uh, portion of the bioconjugate. This light sensitive moiety can be replaced with pH sensitive. For example, cancer tissue has lower pH than the normal tissue. Now when this particle go into the cancer tissue, the less pH property can be explored to disassemble these particles. When this particle disassemble, the drug molecule inside this assembly could be released and they can target the cancer tissues. If we can develop an indigenous technology, then uh, all of a sudden uh, we have a huge potential because this is a platform technology. That means I can apply this to any infectious diseases. And pretty much any antigen you give, then I can really make a, make a vaccine out of that. And that is something very powerful, especially for a countries like India, which has a lot of problem with the infectious diseases. So if one could develop a vaccine within a limited time, then you can save number of you know, lives.